Welcome to another MTD Technical Corner. Now today we're talking about difficult to make components and how you can program those with a CAM system. Now if you look at the, the component here, most of it looks pretty easy. You've got three extra pockets, some bores, some drills, uh, and tapped holes. But inside here you've got this kind of really awkward little pocket here, Justin. Um, and it looks like you can't really access it from anywhere. How did you machine this? And do you see a lot of co uh, components like this? Yeah, I mean, that component in, in, in particular is it's a Formula E uh, suspension upright. Um, and it's very common of, of the types of parts that we see now. De designs are becoming more complex, which means that the features that then need to be machined are becoming more complex. Yeah, and, and why are these designs becoming more complex? I mean, are the parts being designed for something other than manufacture? I think I, I think CAD systems are becoming smarter um, as they're maturing. More tools are available. Um, efficiency means parts need to be lighter weight these days, which means more features are being added to make them lighter weight. Absolutely, and Hypermill is known for um, high spec milling applications, um, as among amongst others. Um, how, how did you how could you possibly program a feature like this? And, what, and what's hard about programming a feature like this? Yeah, so as a CAM program, I think we've all come across a situation where there isn't really a toolpath to do the job, to do the feature that you want to machine, because you're limited to, to the options that are available in the system. Um, so we, so, so that in particular, is, I guess it's classed as an undercut, but it's not just a slot, it's actually a featured undercut. So we have uh, rework cycles, um, which effectively remove the rules and enable you to, to, to make your own toolpath. Okay, so remove the rules in what way? I mean, you've got kind of a, a select, as a CAM program, you've got a selection of cycles at your disposal. You've got pockets, adaptive roughing, bores, drills. What is different about rework? So rework, you usually have a toolpath before it as a reference, and then rework is then basically where the controls come in. So if you've got an awkward undercut, let's take that as an example. You can't always get the approach to it. That one is, is a good example because there's another feature in the way in front of it. So you can't, you can't actually get in very easily. And whilst we have five axis cycles as standard available, they're not really gonna give you what you want either. Why not? So, so because down to uh, how, how they're calculated, you, you know what you want to machine and how you want to machine it but that isn't in the standard toolpath listing. Absolutely. So, so for example, with, with that feature, you would just look at it head on with a three axis toolpath, create what you need. So a standard pocketing standard cycle Standard pocketing cycle. The collision checking is off to enable it to calculate and give you the dream toolpath. Yeah. And then we will rework that toolpath in five axis and that will put the collision avoidance back in and orient it where it needs to be. And that's where the word rework comes from is you're reworking a previous cycle. Exactly, yeah. I mean, that's just one example of, of, of the rework cycle, but it, it is about creating toolpaths that, that are non-standard. And I guess the result is you get a really elegant toolpath as if, as if you could access, uh, for example, the, the pocket from, from all sides. Instead, how do you actually manufacture that feature though? What does the actual toolpath look like once you've reworked it? So the actual, so in that instance, the actual three axis toolpath you've created, you don't see. You only see the, the rework cycle, which is then what you would see in the simulation. So you're able to see, see afterwards what it's created. Uh, based on what I'm asking is people have heard that you could kind of just get a really, really nice looking toolpath on a really hard feature. But how do, what does that actually, when you rework it, what does that actually change? How does that change the, the cycle itself? What actually happens? It could be changing the plane or changing the approach. It's basically, because it's a five axis rework cycle, it's what was a three axis toolpath to begin with is now becoming a five axis toolpath. So you don't see the three axis toolpath. You're just seeing five axis in motion uh, following the toolpath that you created. And I guess once you've got that five axis cycle, um, you get all the nice kind of the nice features from Hypermill uh, like trimming to stock and also surface projections? Yeah, so because it kind of, let's say, let's use the term, breaks down the rules, you can actually select any tool type. So it could be you, you want to use an indexed cutter on a feature that, that isn't possible within that toolpath. So yeah, you can, you, you've got more trimming uh, options, which, which gives you a much neater toolpath, uh, trimming to, to the finished stock. Um, you can change tool types. Um, there's a lot of different options in there. And it's not just about hard to access areas, is it? No, that's right. Um, actually, that's, that, that's a good example. So uh, on that component, there's no straight edges or linear edges on it. Um, so something like that, for example, you might have just created a, a cylindrical surface and then you just want to project a toolpath. So that's another use of rework. 
um, and it doesn't have to be created in the same plane. So what we're minimizing as a programmer is the potential need to split tool paths into two or three different options to get what you need or having to create lots of CAD or, or, or you know, lots of extra geometry to drive the toolpath. Hopefully rework cycle um, is, is the magic ticket. So it's not just about um, being able to produce a really elegant toolpath in, in difficult features. It, there's, there's actually a benefit in just terms of programming time as well. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So it's not just elegant toolpaths in easy features. It's also non-standard toolpaths in really hard to reach areas with rework machining from Hypermill as well. Get in touch today. Mm -hmm.